guys, we are back. It's time. After freaking what seems like years, the ARP bolt finally showed up. It's torqued to 250 foot pounds. I got this bad boy ready to go. Counter hold. This goes to exactly 250. I had a couple friends here that are gonna help. First, I gotta get the uh, the tool out. So it's already at the you get the little arrow there. Pull this bad boy off. You can see the arrow there. Boom, matches up with that. And this pulley is keyed like so. You see that? Boom. So and then this has like a pin. It has like little expander things in it to keep it from spinning. Spit if this gear comes off the crank, um, your timing's pretty much fucked. So go to be careful. I should actually just well, I should put the camera down. So, I should lube up this bolt before I even take it out. You got a new crank too? Alright, got the bolt all lubed up. We'll get this bad boy out of there. Should be a mark. Alright guys, here we go. 250 foot down. Ready? getting ahead of ourselves here but she's on belts on chains are connected I'm about to pull this baby right out and then we can start working on the clutch hardware trans boom all right let's see how this goes that's that Uh, smell no. All right, guys, we are making progress. Flywheel on. I am reusing the clutch. Eventually, this will be replaced. Again, I don't have another thirteen hundred dollars to uh, spend on a new clutch right now. So it was doing me just fine. Never hiccuped. I need to make sure I clean the surface. These bolts here go to seventy-five Nm. There's a spot right here you can stick a, a extension into, and then you can use something here to hold the teeth while. Someone torques for you. I'm trying to just get these all in my finger here and do like a cross pattern, torquing like you would a wheel. And then after that, we can get the clutch and flywheel on and then the trans. Then I'm gonna call it a day. I get off work early tomorrow and I'll pull all this junk out of the way. And it should slip in pretty dang easily, especially with all that junk there, so. Ladies and gentlemen, the clutch is installed. This is the first torque on the flywheel was 75 Nm. This was 27 Nm. Got all new hardware and stuff and alignment tool from South Bend and throw out bearing. Got a freshie in there. So I'm going to roll this over or pull the trans over, lower this down, and try and wiggle them together. And then I got all my hardware labeled here. Exhaust side, intake side, and then... It's like 6 o'clock or, or no, yeah, 12, 6, yeah. All right, well, I've never done it like this before. Wish me luck. Okay. 
Well, with the help of Caitlin, uh, I got it on. Everything's nice and tight, bolted down, all good. I'm so freaking happy. Tomorrow, we can uh, throw her in the car. I don't, I didn't show all that much. I'm trying to get things done, I'm trying to make my own personal little deadlines here. I'm cutting out a little bit of camera talk. Um, I don't have much advice for putting this on. He's got to wiggle, 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 maybe turn the axles a little bit to get the spine to turn and pop in and then eventually get your bolts in. I had that freaking gasket thing that was there, kept messing me up, it kept coming off the, the post things and tweaking and I couldn't get bolts through, it was very annoying. And I'm very exhausted now. I still gotta go to the gym, still gotta cook, and I put new braces in the night. A lot of things to do. But I get off work early tomorrow, and it's Friday, I'll see you then. Well, last night was exciting. Got the trains on and everything. Um, I know I didn't record that much. At least I don't think I did. I was drinking beer and stuff, but it's Friday afternoon. I got all the time in the world. Girlfriend ain't off work yet, but once she's home, I have a second set of hands. I'm about to start moving things out of the way here. Um, getting it in here should be pretty freaking... I just hit the end button. Getting it in here should be pretty freaking simple. We only got... Uh, these two connections on the firewall, one here, one here. This goes like up top on the engine itself. We got the downpipe to worry about. I need to screw, actually I need to put in, I need to order the bolt. Vibrant makes one that's like real short, it goes in there, basically like an O2 delete. I'm gonna stick my other O2 back in there for now. Um, nice little scratch I put in there, I'm pissed. Hopefully we can't see it. Um, yeah, so downpipe. We got axles, drive shaft, those two connections back there. Lay down the shifter cables, lay down this, connect that to the throw out bearing. Then we'll just start laying the wiring harness over and going from there, really. I should be able to get a decent amount of this done by myself. Getting this lined up to the motor mounts might be kind of a pain. Might have to use the jack to assist me to try to keep it in place um, along with the axles and the drive shaft. I'll probably get the drive shaft screws on. I'll probably get the motor mount stuff kind of like hand tight and then work it for the drive shaft, the axles, get a couple, well there's only three for that, but like maybe half the axle hardware. And then I'll sink down the motor mounts and then start tightening everything around it up and then lay the harness over and start doing all that. So let's get this shit out of the way and the engine moved over. Um, this is going to be interesting to do by myself, but basically she's in there, wants to rotate, whatever. I'm going to get this mount, because it's got to be under here. I'm going to get it under there and then give it a couple jacks to try and get this side closer to this, because this is like way off. And if not, I'll take the jack on this side and get it up under the trans to help uh, line up the holes. And once they're close enough, I'll drop the bolts in. But now, right now, i got to be really careful about everything around don't want to run into nothing bad or anything like that. Nothing really all that much in the way, but I definitely don't want to scratch the downpipe and I don't want to get the axles like stuck or something, so. All right, boys, I'm sure the time lapse didn't last long enough. I, I got kind of carried away. So I got the engine pretty close to being positioned. Like I said, I had like the weight, like this was under that and I jacked it up so it, it kind of like held its position. Then I got under um, to one side, got three bolts in the axle, kind of pushed the motor over, got the other side on, uh, got two bolts on that side and I kind of centered it, jacked it up little by little and kind of I had to like kind of like push on the starter to get the whole thing to like tilt towards me because it was like it, a lot of weights on the back like where the turbo is while also trying to pay attention to the downpipe and the drive shaft and the axles they're trying to pay attention to everything so I don't crush anything or hit any lines the only thing I did bend one thing uh the inlet here kind of grabbed onto this hose uh which I guess it goes to the vacuum pump so this is for the brake booster 
hopefully because it pulled it out a little bit and rotate like this whole thing was rotated about 180 degrees so i had to rotate it back and stick it under i didn't remember how it went anyway it's on hopefully i didn't damage it and that was the only thing i got caught up on um when doing this clip back here i don't know if you can see it the one tab broke so that kind of pissed me off so i had to put one of these on but uh there's only two lines going to the firewall they're done I'm about to do the shifter and then i'm going to crawl back there I have to loosen up the downpipe. The downpipe's sitting in the drive shaft right now. I gotta go under there and see what's going on. And I can connect the downpipe, put the rest of the axle bolts in. Uh, um, now that I got the, the clutch line on, I can fill this up with fluid and kind of let that, uh, hopefully, gravity feed a little bit. I got a bunch of bottles of RBF 660. So we'll, we'll do that first. And then the shifter. And you know there see what's going on with the exhaust the drive shaft my battery's about to die um i'm not going to record all of this because it's redundant and i'm trying to get things done i'm like ridiculously hyped up and like there's supposed to be like a really bad we're in a tornado watch warning like all the counties around me and stuff so if the wind star do pick up and the tornado does happen around here i'm going to pull have to pull the m3 in move all my shit so just gotta gotta be vigilant there's so much going on i'm trying to show you guys the sky real quick though Man, it doesn't really show up that great on camera, but it is. Let me. All right, boys, the ball is rolling right now. We are. Just got the drive shaft done, shifters done. I'll show you guys. This is hooked up. Bleeder block. I uh, got a couple other random things. About to start on the axle hardware. I'm not going to forget the little locking things this time for the front, and then I got to do the dog bone still. Um, I don't know what these bolts are for. I think this bigger one. Or the fatter one here is for the dog bone. I don't know about this. This little screw in before he chilled this long one. I have no idea. Is this longer than that. Like, no, it doesn't belong there. I don't know what it would belong to. Gotta figure that out. My battery dying again already. Anyway, I'll update you guys after the axle hardware is done and these heat shields right here, actually, they need to be cleaned off before going back in. All right axles on and torqued i am filthy drive shaft done next up um wiring harness bleed the clutch bleed the brakes the storm's finally starting to roll in and the temperature just dropped like literally at least 15 or 20 degrees like instantly it's getting real gross out here Ugh, man so i'm gonna try and get the wiring harness done up here because with the garage door closed i have like not much room at all. Try and get that done first, and I can close the garage. Start getting everything bled. Um, let's see how far we want to go after that. If it starts to storm or whatnot, I'd like to put the radiator and the intercooler on and the hoses to see how I'm gonna. Because I deleted the aux cooler and then like came off here and like went this way and it connects right here. So I think I gotta get a hose from from here to here, something like that. I forget exactly, but I'd like to get it on so I get an idea uh, to call around tomorrow, figure out what I need. For that, I need to get distilled water as well. I need to get some cheap oil to mix with the regular oil, not synthetic, to mix with the break-in additive. Um, yeah, we're just gonna keep chugging along. All right, guys, next day, starting day off. This is my little brother right here, Carl. Oh, he just missed his name. He's wrestling 120 pound. This is the state finals. So he's either gonna get first or second place. He's a, a junior in high school. We're about to see if, uh, if he takes number one in states this year. It's pretty exciting. All right, y'all, it's been a hell of a day. It's about eight hours since I started again today, about eight hours of work yesterday. We are pretty much done. Um, Right now, I'm going in OBD-11 to run the fuel pump. There's about a little less than a quarter tank. Um, if it'll focus, you can hear it. I got my fuel line going to another line, going to a VP jug. Um, I done tested all the injectors, a bunch of stuff in OBD-11 to make sure it's hooked up right. So I don't want to burn the, the pump out. I'm actually going to turn this up to 15 seconds because 10 a little... A little slow. Try to get in here. I have to show you guys how I did this uh, 
Aux radiator delete. I went to advance. I found the hose that I thought that might work. Sorry, the lighting's like ass. There we go. Um, this hose just goes off here and then right down to that one. You can see it down there. Boom. It's like a. I was like, yeah, that one looks stupid enough to maybe work. And it does. I want to get a different clamp for it so it doesn't look so stupid. But um, got a bunch of water in there. It's not taking any more anymore. We got the break in additive, the Lucas, plus um, five quarts of conventional oil in there right now. Um, like I said, just need to drain nasty old fuel. Woo! Put some new stuff in there. Oh man, this damn light. It'll be good to go. I don't know how long this is going to take. It's supposed to be having, we got people coming over. We're going to have a party tonight. I'm trying to get this car started. Oil change, new oil in. I can call it a night. I got a bunch of edging to do tomorrow for y'all. Uh, here's my little fuel pump pack. I think I'm going to have to like, I don't know how. Because this whole thing doesn't spin to get it into the fuel rail. So that's going to be a fun thing in itself. But I'm going to get it empty first. Oh, look how perfect the distance is here. I was standing on here. <laughs> uh, I was trying to put this damn radiator and support on by myself with the garage closed. It was such a struggle. I was getting so frustrated. I had to call for help. She was in there doing school. I had to have her come out and help me. But everything went together. So far, so smooth. Got it under on the tender. Obviously, the intake needs to go in and stuff. But um, yeah, we're getting there. I'm going to get these screws in get ready to get the grounds on keep running the pump ladies and gents here we are just fill up the fuel tank after emptying it um, the only thing I gotta do is dry crank the car um, unplug the fuel pump here spark plug or the coil packs aren't connected let her crank a couple times I'm gonna try and get on OBD 11 well I'm going to get on OBD 11 trying to find maybe there's a screen somewhere where I can see um, something oil pressure related that way I come on for that as a dry crank make sure there's something going on I know the pump works because I turned it by hand and it did things so I get that I'd like to dry pump it a couple times um, check oil level and just go from there then connect coil packs and everything problem the pump again fingers crossed I'm nervous I'm a little drunk Fuel pump just uh, just prime. Nice. It is like almost two in the morning, Saturday night. Here we go. We're gonna try and start the car. Here you go. See how this goes. I am exhausted, tired, a little drunk. One second, I'll have to grab it. Multiple reasons why you shouldn't get drunk while working on your car. I totally forgot to hook up the intercooler pipes because I was saving those for last along with the intake. Didn't do either one of those and didn't put the O2 sensor, uh, the secondary, the one further down the line. I plan on ordering like the vibrant, like the real small, like basically O2 delete, but it's just an open hole right now. So that's why all that smoke was coming up. Um, just a little bit of water on the ground from the overflow of the tank, no oil on the ground. Everything sounded good. Cranked up pretty freaking quick, quicker than I thought it would. There were some sparks coming from down near the starter. I think uh, there was some stuff near the the fans or something. I'm gonna reinvestigate. I gotta get this O2 sensor in, hooked up all the intake stuff. We'll go for another start and actually let it idle and stuff here. Check oil. We'll see. All right, here we go. Round two. O2 plugged up. Intake stuff on. I'm gonna be looking for sparks down near the starter area. I just threw my spare filter on. It looks like it's got a, I don't know, it's just from sitting on something. Just kind of toss that on there. Got the other intake sitting in the back of the car. Huh? I don't know, keep that filter on there. 
What's well, what's in in that box? Inside the box is that filter. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. saying I wouldn't even put it on there. Why? Because that thing was working a lot earlier. You really think it's gonna catch like that? I don't think it will. We'll see.